Hey, friends, Sean from Draft Therapy here, and on today's review for you, be on the lookout for a devil cat. Diablo Gato is an 8% New England style double IPA from Lord Hobo Brewing in Woburn, Massachusetts. Lord Hobo has been distributing here in Michigan for a couple of years, but this is going to be the first time I'm going to take a look at him on the channel. And I'm not going to lie. The can art absolutely is what caught my eye, so let's get a look at the label and get it into a glass. But first, I'd like to thank my executive producers, Eric Lutowski, Brian Kramer, and David Jeffries for helping to bring this review to you today. If you'd like to help out the channel, maybe just buy me a beer. Take a look at my Patreon at patreon.com slash draft underscore therapy, where you can get early access to these videos, exclusive members-only live streams, and a few other special perks available only to patrons. Take a look at the label. Let's take a look at the can. So we'll start at the front here on the top. It, well, the whole thing, we'll just kind of look at it. It's got this kind of Hawaiian slash survivor kind of vibe to it. It's got a dark red to lighter red kind of sunset. There's a sun setting behind this idol of a cat holding a skull. It's got three eyes. It's just got a very uh, Hawaiian kind of vibe to it or a very, you know, Samoan kind of look to it. It says Lord Hobo with their crown logo, Diablo Gato underneath that. And underneath all the cat and all the skull and all the flowers and everything else, it says New England Double India Pale Ale. If we turn around on the back, there's a lot of words here. So what it says, we'll start from the top. Good Lord series, limited release number three of six. It's a bi-monthly release for some of their most cherished beers. And a few that are new to market-wide release. These beers are always big and bold, boundary-pushing examples of our compromising need to make world-class beer. And then it has the information here for Diablo Gato. I'm just going to read it real quick here. It says... This New England double IPA was inspired by our very own graphic designer Chuck and his band Diablo Gato who play a style of music that's not quite punk and definitely not rockabilly. It's a greasy revved up garage stomp with a swampy swing and a voodoo twang. And what better way to conjure up the sinister three-eyed Gato than a raucous hazy juice bomb packed with galaxy and centennial hops, bursting with notes of juicy pineapple from the galaxy hops and further amplified by the unique and out there Kavike yeast. Get ready to turn your taste buds up to 11 with this 8% bombshell. Then it says New England double IPA. Underneath that has a QR code where you can find out more information about Lord Hobo. You may even be able to take a picture of the one that I'm showing you on the screen. And then it says proudly brewed by Lord Hobo in Woburn, Massachusetts. You can find out more about them on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Lord Hobo Brewing. This is 8% alcohol by volume one pint uh, and then the canned on date for this is may 12th 2021 it is now Ju june i was gonna say july june 13th so this is about a month old really kind of in the prime still for trying out a beer like this so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna grab i'm gonna grab an ipa glass today and we're gonna crack this open and put a nose on the can let's let's do that but it's a really cool label. I like all the kind of colors and everything. It's just kind of really flashy. It really just kind of caught my eye. And I am picking up on a bit of a dankness here, maybe a tiny bit of a pineapple, a bit of a citrus kind of note to it as well. Pineapple has been like the flavor of the month. I mean, almost literally flavor of the season maybe is more likely or more, more like it uh, for IPAs and New England style IPAs. So pouring this, it's kind of coming pretty clear out of the can. It's not too hazy. There's not a whole lot of kind of hazy characteristics just out of the stream into the glass. But as I pour that in, I'm going to pour a little bit more on top of there. Getting about three fingers worth of head. This glass generally kicks up a lot of kind of a, you know, a nice, rich kind of head. And no, no, you know, no change here. So what we see here, like I said, is about three fingers worth of head. A little bit off-white shading, a little bit towards a yellow head compact, dense bubbles, a little bit of a larger bubble uh, on the cross section or on the side. And I haven't picked this up yet, but the one thing that I've noticed, I'm going to hold it up to the light. I don't know if you can see that or how well you can see it, but there is just like, there is just a bunch of, um, you know, particulate floating in suspension. This reminds me very much of um, Lagunitas Supercluster. That's what I was thinking of. I couldn't think of what the name of it was, but yeah, Lagunitas is cluster. Um, but yeah, lots of particulate. And uh, let's put a nose on the glass here. Yeah, getting really sweet, really actually very sweet notes. It smells very much like juicy pineapple. You get a lot of just kind of tropical uh, fruit aroma. It just has a really has a real nice inviting kind of aroma to it. It smells very sweet. So let's go ahead and try this out and see how it is. Cheers. Cheers. 
that flavor up on the upfront. Let's talk about the mouthfeel. It's a little bit, it's got a soft mouthfeel. It's kind of almost a little bit shading towards the medium side of a mouthfeel of a New England or a double New England style IPA. So it definitely has that soft mouthfeel, but it's a little bit on the thicker side, you know, not super thick, but a little bit thicker than a medium kind of style beer, maybe a little thicker than some of the beers that I've had in this style before. And let's talk about, let me pour a little bit more in here and I'll talk about the flavor because there's a lot of really interesting, intriguing kind of flavors. And for as clear as that stream was pouring through, I can't believe how much particulate. I'm just blown away how, by how much is in there, but I'll try another taste out. We'll talk about the taste here. So it's got a nice sweetness up front. It kind of has a bit of a, like I said, has that same kind of aromas that I was picking up. I'm getting flavors of that. So I'm getting a nice pineapple kind of note in there, getting a little bit of a citrus, getting very much tropical fruit flavors and fruit kind of vibes out of this. It is very, it has a really nice kind of juicy, sweet kind of punch up front. But then once that sweetness up front, you kind of get, you know, the swallow As I took a bigger swallow. I didn't, the sweetness comes up very quickly up front, but then it kind of fades. And that's when you start to pick up a little bit of a citrus bitterness. It's not overly bitter. It's very smooth. There's not a whole lot of bitterness going on. There's not really all these different kind of notes. So you're not really getting much of a complex bitterness on the tail end. But what I am getting on the finish is a nice, like right now, as I sit and I talk about it, there is a nice, just kind of citrusy, uh, bitterness to it, but it's not overly strong. It's not like a huge citrus kind of bitter note. It's just kind of in there. It's a little bit of more of a zesty um, orange peel kind of bitterness. There might be a little bit of a lemon in there too. It is a very nice balance going from something that starts off very sweet, very pineapple, very citrus, very tropical, and kind of ends on this really subtle, uh, smooth citrus bitterness. Now, the pineapple that I got on that first taste, I'm not really getting as much. It's kind of turned more into like a tropical kind of flavor. But that being said, this does kind of follow those, like I said, that whole uh, pineapple kind of vibe that we're getting in a lot of these beers this season. So, you know, it's another one of those. But uh, the flavor is really good. It, it just, it, it mellows out very quickly. It's 8%. It doesn't have a big, huge 8% kind of flavor to it. There's not a, a booziness that goes with it, with it. It's very dangerous, but a very good kind of, you know, after a long day of doing some work outside in the heat, kind of maybe sitting back with, with a Diablo Gato from Lord Hobo and just kicking back and, and having a beer. All right, friends, that has been Diablo Gato from Lord Hobo. Have you had this beer? And what are some other Lord Hobo beers you think I should be on the lookout for? Let me know in the comments down below. And while you're down there, if you like beer, you might want to subscribe and click that bell because I'm here talking about beer twice a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays. It's all for free for viewers just like you. And you might miss your newest favorite if you're not subscribed and getting those notifications. So until next time, I'm Sean from Draft Therapy. Thanks for stopping by. Remember, drink craft beer, support your local breweries, and most importantly, don't forget to treat yourself to a little draft therapy. See you next time. Cheers. Cheers.